God's banker was the description given to Roberto Calvi while head of the Banco Ambrosiano, which collapsed in fraud and scandal in 1982. The bank held Vatican assets, hence Calvi was referred to as God's banker. He fled to Venice, where he spent nine days before going to London, where he ultimately met his death by hanging at the Blackfriars Bridge. His death was ruled a suicide, but years later, with the reopening of the case, found Calvi to have been murdered. In his brief time in Venice, Calvi stayed with Lucrezia Capocci, the daughter of Leonardo Capocci, who had been part of the Propaganda Masonica movement begun in the north in the late 19th century. Leonardo Capocci was a close associate of Francesco Semetti, one of the Council of Ten, then ruling Venice. Capocci was the banker for the council and became involved in money laundering and fraud when Semetti was accused of siphoning funds to Swiss accounts that he alone controlled with Capocci's help. Semetti's fall from power was pardoned by his claim of Capocci's acting alone. Lacking support, Capocci was forced to flee Venice in 1909, leaving behind a stately palazzo in the Canareggio quarter. His illegitimate daughter, Lucrezia, managed to hold the palazzo following the death of her mother, Silvana Biondi, a known courtesan. Lucrezia took her father's name and held loose alliances with the scattered members of Propaganda Masonica, the Freemason group that later became known as Propaganda Due, or P2. Roberto Calvi had been a prominent member of P2 and maintained various contacts to ensure his movements. Leonardo Capocci's flight led him to a small mountaintop village of Conca Casale near to Venafro in the Molise province. There he met Luisa Ascioli, whom he married and together they left for America in 1912, settling in Providence, Rhode Island. Leonardo and Luisa had five daughters. The last one was named Elisa. She was born in 1923. Elisa Capocci married Egidio Brigidi in 1946 in Providence. They had a son, Stefan, born in 1951. Two years later, Leonardo Capocci died in Providence. His death was determined to be due to heart failure. One week earlier, he had been paid a visit by Luigi Forza, a known member of P2, and the loyal lieutenant of Benedetto Croce, a prominent official of the dissolved fascist party in Italy. Croce had died in 1952, leaving behind a list of grievances to be settled by retribution. Stefan Brigidi first left for Italy in 1972, armed with a vague family history, several cameras, an abundant amount of film, and some large questions. The many trips to Italy that followed would merge to become one long journey. There would be revelations and epiphanies along the way, and still more uncertainties would arise. Leonardo's grandson, the photographer, became more determined to break through the obstacles, the fears, and ultimately obtain some clarity. Some 40 years later, the journey continues. Hello, I'm Stefan Brigidi. I'm a practicing artist, I'm a teacher. Afraid of the Dark is my story, largely about my ancestry, but also about fairly recent events and history itself. Afraid of the Dark is about that exterior world, that darkness that we, we first encounter, but also about the inner world that I think many of us can relate to. Getting closer to our fears, understanding them, and coming to terms with them. This is what the book is truly about. I'd like to share this with you. So please consider supporting the book. I'd appreciate your assistance and I thank you for your time and for your interest.